and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to something a little bit different. There is a watch in here, I promise, but in reality, this video is mostly about me. Now, if that sounds crashingly boring, I do not blame you at all. Just skip on to the next video, please, for both our sakes. This might also sound like I am fig jamming or perhaps humble bragging, and I suppose there is a little bit of both of those things in here today, but I think I probably put enough work in, put enough effort in over the last 10 years that I'm allowed just a little bit of that today, and I hope there is enough humble to balance out the brag. Now, I try not to talk about myself too much on the channel, other than my opinions and experiences of watches, of course, because it is about the watches and it's not about me most of the time. I think you probably know that I'm from Scotland. The accent is a bit of a giveaway. I think you probably know that I live in Australia and have done for nearly 20 years now. You might also know that I got married five years ago because the wedding ring began to appear in every single video thereafter. It's still there. And you possibly know that I became a dad for the first time earlier on this year, particularly if you follow me on Instagram where I post the occasional picture of the chunky delight that is my son. And maybe you know, because I've mentioned it a couple of times over the years, that as well as working and running this channel, I have spent the last 10 years in full-time tertiary education. And this week I finally got the email that I've been waiting for. Those 10 years are over. You don't have to call me Dr. Jody, but you can if you want to. It's now official, I have been conferred with a Doctor of Philosophy by Sydney's Macquarie University. I handed in my thesis in February this year, a whole 10 days before Chunky Sun was born. Talk about cutting it neat. It took forever to get marked. I then took forever with the minimal corrections that one of the examiners required. They're all done now and I've been given the rubber stamp. I will probably graduate in March next year. There's a big backlog because of COVID. So it has been a pretty big year for me, all things considered then. And if I was looking for an excuse to buy myself a nice timepiece, not that any of us need excuses, right? I think there are a couple of legitimate ones in there somewhere. And indeed, I decided to treat myself to the watch that has been my number one grail for some time now. If you watched this video earlier on this year, then you already know what it is, or just check the thumbnail. But why, you ask, did I study for a whole 10 years? What did I study, and what am I gonna do with all of those qualifications, other than just hang the bits of paper on the wall? Well, I started back in full-time education in June 2012, but the story of why I found myself back in full-time education goes back to the early 1990s. Hey, it wasn't that long ago. But okay, it was this long ago. I actually went to university in Scotland in 1993, St Andrews University specifically, which even if you don't know the uni, you'll probably know as the home of golf. You might also know it as where Prince William went to study in the late 1990s. Now I had already left by that point, which is just as well because the whole place went mad with people either looking to have a prince for a mate or a prince for a mate, if you see what I mean. One of them succeeded, good for her. Now, I went there with the intention of studying science, specifically genetics. I'd enjoyed science at school and quite fancied the idea of being the mad scientist type, working in a lab cloning sheep or something like that anyway. But as it turns out, I didn't fancy doing the work involved to get there. Like so many young men living away from home for the first time, I discovered alcohol and various other things and spent most of my time in St Andrews in bars, either on one side of the bar or the other. I scraped through my first two years with numerous resets, but didn't even sign on for my third year. I dropped out and worked behind a bar, which seems like a great idea when you're 19, but it's not what I would describe as an easy or a well-paid job. A couple of years later, I decided I had to go back and finish. It was only one year after all, so I went back as a mature student, aged a whole, 21, and this time got within a single semester of completing a degree before dropping out again. The usual suspects were involved once again, as was a PlayStation and Gran Turismo this time, as things had moved on from the Super Nintendo. So only 22 years of age and a double dropout, which is really quite an achievement when you think about it. My poor old mother, by the way, who was the first person from her working class family to go to university and who had used that education to achieve an amazing trailblazing career in the law and to give my sister and I the opportunities on a plate that she had had to fight for, well, let's just say that she wasn't impressed. 
But my life moved on and I continued to work in hospitality. I had a lot of fun and I met and worked with a lot of amazing people. Some great characters in Glasgow and then over here in Sydney. When I moved over here with a Scottish girlfriend in 2003. Now, she was a clever lady, very Glasgow, very sharp in all senses, and we had a big circle of friends, most of whom were young professionals like her. And there was me, still working most nights and most weekends, but now with a chip on my shoulder that was getting bigger and bigger. Now, we ended up splitting up at the beginning of 2012. I got made redundant from my job at the same time. <laughs> which meant that I had one of those rare opportunities in life, which look on the surface like a total disaster. I mean, life as I knew it had just ended, but actually became an opportunity to rebuild myself in any direction I liked. And I knew that in order to fix myself to try and undo some of the self-inflicted damage, I had to go back again and get the degree that I had failed so spectacularly to get in the 1990s. Now, I thought seriously at that point about going back to Scotland, studying law and working for the family law firm, but I ended up staying in Australia and signing up for Open University to study online. I found myself a job working behind the bar of an airport lounge with another bunch of real characters, but with very few customers. And I was able to do most of a Bachelor of Arts in History and Politics standing behind the bar. I finished it in three years with a solid set of results while working full time and paying for everything as I went. I think one puts in a bit more effort when one is paying the bills. And I graduated in the middle of 2015, the day after I went on my very first date with the lovely woman who is now Mrs. Jomwa. And doing that, completing a degree aged 39 on my own terms, kind of fixed me. Or at least it got the crushing weight of my own failure off my back. I had broken myself essentially, and by finally finishing, I had gone a long way towards fixing myself. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm still a bit, but I'm not nearly as angry at the world as I used to be. But it turned out though that The Bachelor wasn't enough. When I got about halfway through it, I was quite into it and I started looking at master's degrees and I found one at Macquarie University on campus that was free. Still a Scotsman at heart. In fact, if you did well enough, there were scholarships available. So in 2016, I started a Master of Research in Modern History on campus at Macquarie. I actually started this channel in 2017 during my thesis writing year for that course. And at first, the videos and chatting with all of you were nothing more than a welcome distraction from the thesis and from the particularly dark and heavy period of history that I chose as my subject. Well, it clearly didn't distract me too much because I got the scholarship, I got a good mark for my thesis, and I got the University Medal for Modern History awarded in 2018. That's the picture that I hacked up for today's thumbnail. And that good result meant that I qualified for a scholarship for a PhD. And surely that is the ultimate redemption. Double dropout to Dr. Jody. So I had a bit of a break, nine months off, the channel was growing nicely, I got married, I moved house, and then started the PhD in September 2018. Now I can't say it was actually an awful lot of fun, it was very solitary and very isolating, but I had all of you to talk at three times a week and to talk with through your comments and your emails, so it wasn't too bad. And I must say, I wasn't complaining about the Google ad revenue either. It certainly took the starving out of starving student. Now, a certain global pandemic forced me off campus and back into the house during various lockdowns. So I took two, three months periods off entirely. I just couldn't cope with my entire life being back in one room, this room. But like I said, I submitted in February this year, three and a half years after I started the PhD, including those breaks, and just under a decade since I started back at university. Still here? Well, that's a surprise. You must not have much on today. So what did I study? Well, I talked already about history and politics. You can throw Asian studies into that mix as well. During my undergrad, I became fascinated by Chinese history. Not the ancient stuff, but by 20th century Chinese history. And because the country has such a huge population, everything is bigger in China. You know, the wars are bigger, the famines are bigger, the floods are bigger. Everything seems just huge, especially to someone who comes from a small country. I mean, in Scotland, we still sing songs about the Battle of Culloden, where approximately 1,300 people died. Did you even know that there was a civil war in China in the 1850s that left at least 20 
million dead. That's the same as died in World War One, possibly more, possibly 70 or even up to 100 million dead. Just insane numbers and people don't even know because that's not the history that we learn at school in the West. My problem was though, I don't speak Chinese and I was not about to start taking this on in my late 30s. That just would not have gone well. So I needed to find a subject that was kind of about Chinese history, but from a Western English language perspective. Enter Iris Chang's The Rape of Nanking, The Forgotten Holocaust of World War II. Now, some of you may be familiar with this book. I'm sure some of you have read it. It's a really gruesome account of a particularly bloody episode of the Japanese invasion of China in the late 1930s. It was written by a Chinese American in the late 1990s and it was a huge success. It sold half a million copies, was translated into 13 different languages and is still commonly available in your average bookstore. It's a really personal, angry and emotionally driven book and perhaps because of that, it wasn't taken seriously as a work of history. That and the extreme versions of events it portrays. It's also very anti-Japanese racist. So in my master's thesis and then my PhD thesis, I argued that it was more than just a flawed piece of history writing. It was a testimony of the author's personal trauma, a trauma carried by her family and perhaps carried by millions of Chinese diasporans across the globe. And despite the book's success, Iris Chang killed herself in 2003. I also argued that since then, she has become a proxy in some ways for the trauma of the massacre. She represents the victims and has become one of them, despite the huge time and distance between then and now between the victims in 1937 and her. So basically, I spent five years erecting a, an elaborate theoretical framework around a book that wasn't very good. That, my friends, is what PhDs are all about. What am I gonna do with my qualifications? Probably nothing. It should be clear by now that I didn't spend the last 10 years looking for a career change or looking to cure cancer. I admit perhaps my reasons for studying were more personal and more selfish than that. I was offered some tutoring at Macquarie, but I'm just too busy with the channel and with the aforementioned chunky baby at the moment. Maybe next year, but maybe not next year. And that's okay. I just enjoyed the studying. Now, before I get to the watch, there is a watch. I have to clarify a couple of things here. I am not suggesting for one minute that everybody should or has to engage in education after school. I am not suggesting that somehow it is the key to happiness because it isn't. People find happiness and indeed unhappiness in all kinds of different places. Tertiary education is increasingly expensive. It can be incredibly boring and you can get to the end of however many years, not really Really any further forward than you were when you started in terms of your life goals and career goals and with crushing debt. So I am not saying for one minute that you have to do what I did. I'm also not suggesting that there is anything wrong with working behind a bar or in hospitality for your entire life, your entire working career, because there isn't. I had a great time for close to 20 years, I think. What I am saying is that if you are perhaps younger than I am and have the opportunity, if you are fortunate enough to be in a position to go to a college or to a university, then you owe it to the people who put you in that position. And most of all, you owe it to your future self to make the most of that opportunity. I did not and I regretted that deeply. Or if you have a monkey on your back, if you have a chip on your shoulder, for whatever reason, if a younger version of you made mistakes which you still haven't quite come to terms with, then maybe you should do something about it, whatever it is, whether that's forgiving your younger self and moving on, or whether that's trying to fix what was broken. Now, I still have regrets, of course, but I have one less regret than I used to. And as for my mother, well, she still thinks I'm a big idiot, but we're in a better place than we were in the late 90s, that's for sure. Fucking hell, Jody, that's a lot of soul bearing today that nobody actually asked for. Where's the watch? It's here. You know what the watch is, don't you? It's a Tudor Black Bay 58, a watch that I have long been a big fan of. And not only that, it once belonged to a celebrity, Mr. X. It's the very same watch that I reviewed earlier on this year. He just has far too many Tudors at the moment and so we did a deal. It actually involved a part exchange of some very fancy alcoholic beverages and a large pile of cash moving in his direction and a Tudor Black Bay 58 moving in mine. It's just about perfect, I think. I still love this retro look, the black and gold. I'm definitely not sick of that, nor am I sick of the Fotinad look 
on the hands and the indices. The size is ideal, the weight is fine. A couple of years ago, I would have moaned about the lack of date, but now I've got so many bloody watches in my collection that I quite enjoy the lack of date. It's one less thing to have to set when you pull it out of the box. But it did come with one condition from Mr. X. And that condition was that he was allowed to get the case back engraved. He's already booked it in early next year. He's got some fancy engraver in Adelaide who's done some of his watches in the past, and he's booked this one in for some personalization. The problem is he won't tell me what he's gonna get engraved on it. I have suggested my son's date of birth and initials, or perhaps Dr. Jody and the date of my graduation, or even don't sell me, you prick. I'd be okay with that, to be honest, but it's Mr. X, so who knows what I'll actually end up with. If it's a pleasant sentiment, perhaps you'll see the watch again in a future video. If it's typical Mr. X, perhaps you won't. So there you have it. Was there enough humble with the brag? And most importantly, did I morally justify the purchase of an expensive Swiss watch? Everything I said today was true. Everything I said today was from the heart. I still give myself quite a hard time about everything in life, really. I'm a bit of a Goldilocks. I'm never happy with other people or with me. I'm quite hard to please. And that applies to myself as well. But I am quite proud of my achievements over the last decade and to be able to build this channel and to build this business in parallel with everything that I did at university and to start a family as well. I can't give myself too hard a time about that, can I? Perhaps next year when I actually graduate, when I wear the floppy hat and they give me that third bit of paper proving how smart I am, according to them, I'll actually start to believe it. Thank you very much for making it all the way to the end here. I'm not quite sure how many people will make it all the way to the end here. The channel has meant a lot to me over this last five years and I obviously couldn't have done all of that without you watching. So thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this one as well. Perhaps you would like to watch one of these two now. I hope to see you all again in a future video.